All right, guys. Here's your uh, Chapter 1 review. I posted a PDF, but also a video in case you had a few questions. Um, first problem, first three problems, really. Don't think you need me. I think you'll be fine. Just make sure when you have fractions that you leave them simplified. Okay, don't use decimals. Don't forget to reduce. Okay, uh, number four and five, I figured you probably wanted my help explaining because you guys hate these. So I'll do number four and five for you. Also do number six. All right, number four. Let's try to get this fraction right here that has X in it by itself because then I can undo this fraction and I can make my life a little bit easier. So the first thing would be minus 3 on both sides. I would have X times T minus 1 over 8 equals A minus 3. You just have to get out of your head that it's going to look pretty because it's not. It's just not going to be a pretty answer, but that's okay. Now I'm going to try to get rid of this fraction. So the opposite of dividing by 8 would be to multiply both sides by 8. And when I do that, I have to make sure the whole right side gets multiplied by 8. So now those are going to have xt minus 1 equals, and let's just distribute that, 8a minus 24. Okay, keep working. So now it's just like i got a mul number multiplied to x and a number subtracted. So if I had a, an equation like that, I would add 1. Okay, I can combine like terms on the right-hand side. I have xt equals 8a. Now minus 23, and that's why we distributed, is because now we can combine those like terms. And the last step would be to divide by t. Again, ugly answer, but here would be your solution. Okay, Number 5, I see two x's, one on each side of the equation. So let's get all those onto the same side, see if that makes it easier for us. I can subtract 3x to both sides to get rid of them from here. 4 minus 3 is 1x plus 5. Uh, make sure this negative stays with the y. And then look, you have one more step, minus 5. That's it. x equals negative y minus 5. You're done. Cool? All right, my copy guy must have screwed this up, so I'm going to have to fire him, but we'll make this little bit at the bottom of the page work. This is a lot like one of those problems that you had around the room. So we have speed is equal to distance divided by time. That's what we're going to be using here because we know speed, we know a distance, and we want to know a time. Okay, if our speeds average 55 and 48, so our speed is going to be 55 plus 48. Our distance is 618. And when when is telling me that I don't know the time. So whatever I don't know, I make that a variable. So x is going to be my time over x. Now I just solve this equation. 55 and 48 give me 113. Hmm, 103. I lied. Sorry, I'm rusty on my math too. 618 over x. I multiply both sides by x to get clear the denominator. Let me get a little extra space over here. I'm going to come up to the top here. I'll have 103x equals 618. I divide by 103 and I get x equals 6. Which means after 6 hours, because they're traveling in miles per hour, the buses will be 618 miles apart. On slide 2, on page 2 here, have all your equation or all your inequalities worked out, your graphs, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. On slide page three here, here are your two in compound inequalities. Make sure on number eleven you flip the sign because you're doing you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number here, negative two t, and just split it up. Don't try to do too much in one step. Split it into two separate inequalities, solve them both, bring them back together, and graph. All right, let's do these absolute value equations. So this first one, I have 3x plus 3 in absolute value equals 18. 3x plus 3 is isolated, so right away I can split into two equations. 3x plus 3 equals 18, and 3x plus 3 equals negative 18. Okay, I solve those equations. x equals 5 here. 
and x equals negative 7 here. And then I just double check to make sure they're not extraneous. 3 times 5 plus 3 equals 18. Yep, that's true. And negative 21 plus 3 equals 18. Well, the absolute value of negative 18 is 18. So that is true. Very good. Okay, number 13. A little different because I got x's on both sides, but same idea. The absolute value bars are isolated, so I just say 3x plus 5 equals 5x plus 2. Then I say 3x plus 5. And then make sure that whole side is negative. 5x plus 2. Okay, solve these equations. So I would minus 3x on both sides, minus 2 on both sides, I'd get 2x equals 3. Divide by 2, x equals 3 halves. Over here I'd have 3x plus 5. Sorry about my handwriting, guys. I'm trying my best. Equals negative 5x minus 2. I'd add 5x to both sides, and I'd subtract 5 from both sides. So add 5x. I'd have 8x equals negative 7, which makes x equal to negative 7 eighths. Okay, I need to check these. So 3 times 3 halves plus 5 equals 5 times 3 halves plus 2. So that would be 9 halves plus 5, or 19 halves, and let's see if this is 19 halves, 15 halves plus 2, which is 19 halves. Alright, so I know that x equals 3 halves, definitely a solution, not extraneous. Check this other one real quick, let me change colors so we don't get confused. Absolute value, 3 times negative 7 over 8 plus 5 equals 5 times negative 7 over 8 plus 2. Okay. Negative 21 eighths plus 5 equals negative 35 eighths plus 2. Remember, common denominator. So I'd have negative 21 plus 40. That gives me 19 eighths equals negative 35 plus 16 is going to be negative 19 eighths. Now these are not equal. One is positive on the left hand side here. This is positive, but unfortunately this is negative. So that means that this right here is an extraneous solution. Okay, meaning it's not really a solution to this problem. All right, two more to go, guys. Here, same idea. Um, the absolute value bars are isolated, so I can split it up into two inequalities. Remember, when you're doing inequalities, absolute value, they're going to be a compound inequality. If the sign is less than, I want you to think less than, meaning it's going to be an and inequality, shade in the middle. If it starts off with a greater than sign, I want you to think great or, meaning it's going to be probably shading the edges. So, on this problem right here, I need to get a new color. Purple is good. I'm going to keep one the exact same. 8x minus 100 is less than 36. It's less than, so it's going to be and. Keep the left side the same. Flip the sign and make the right side negative. Okay, solve. 8x is less than 136. And... 8x is greater than 64. Alright, divide by 8, I get x is less than 17. And x is bigger than 8. Okay, can you think of numbers that are less than 17 but also bigger than 8? Of course, like 10. Okay, it doesn't say graph, so I'm not going to graph. Same thing over here, guys. Let's do, uh, ooh, I got a rainbow color. What's that mean? Oh. That's boring. Okay, so I need to make sure that my absolute value bars are isolated. Well, I see a negative sign, which is really like saying negative 1 times that. So let's divide both sides by negative 1. I have to make sure when I divide by a negative number, I flip the sign. 
Okay. And I like to have my X on the left hand side because that makes more sense for us. That's where all of our rules come into play. So let's just flip that. Because now my X is on the left hand side. Now I can follow that rule that I told you right here. Less than greater. But that only works if the X is on the left. Okay, so let's split this into two. 46 minus 4X is less than 6. And 46 minus 4x is greater than negative 6. Solve this equation. Take away 46, I get negative 4x is less than negative 40. Divide by negative 4, so I flip the sign again. x is greater than 10. And same thing, negative 4x greater than negative 52. Divide by negative 4, so I flip the sign. x is less than 13. Can you think of numbers greater than 10, also less than 13? Sure, 11, 12, 12.3. There is your review. I hope this helps you guys. Good luck on your test tomorrow, all right?